Hello everyone, it's Clayton. I just finished watching Bullet Train, starring Brad Pitt, Joey King, Hiroyuki Sanada, Andrew Koji, Brian Tyree Henry, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Sandra Bullock, and Bad Bunny. And directed by the guy who did Atomic Blonde and Deadpool 2. So Bullet Train happens to be based off of a novel known as Maria Beetle, but it happens to shine on its own merits thanks to its talented cast full of full of big stars in the business and with its action choreography and direction that happens to make a very funny and often very violent film that's two hours of pure joy on top of a train in a train and around it and sometimes on top of it honestly with this and Mugen Train it kind of amazes me that there aren't more action films that take place entirely on a train but let's get to the story shall we the story revolves around Ladybug, played by Brad Pitt, who's a very unlucky assassin, who ends up in a big bid for the suitcase of the White Death, played by Michael Shannon. Basically, the White Death is this big crime lord from Russia who's taken residence in Japan, and who has a, a briefcase that's very important to him. Ladybug happens to be on a train with a bunch of other assassins, and they happen to try to kill each other in order to get their hands on the case, while Ladybug tries to figure out exactly what's going on, exactly who's on, on his side and who isn't, and to see if he can manage to get out of this alive while also figuring out all the pieces of this very complicated, yet very surprisingly well-structured assassin story, as as he, we try to see if he can get past the, the White Death at the end with whoever happens to... He, to get on his side. But that's all I'll say about the story. The story actually happens to be told in a bit of an out-of-order fashion, but similar to, to films like Memento, it actually happens to make a lot of sense when it comes to the structure, when it comes to its frequent flashbacks, and when it comes to a lot of its characters that happen to have their own stories to tell. There are these two UK assassins who practically, practically grew up to be brothers, there's this girl, played by Joey King, known as the Prince, who happens to have a connection to the White Death. There's a Japanese father and grandfather who are trying to get justice after their after a little their little boy gets ends up in the hospital. And there happens to be a few crazier members of the group, like a Mexican bounty hunter by the name of the Wolf, played by Bad Bunny, and and a, a poison expert known as the Hornet, played by Zazie Beetz. All these characters happen to be very charismatic, and even the ones that don't appear that often or who only appear for a scene or two happen to steal the show when it comes to their action scenes. That's not to say that there's non-stop action throughout the entire thing. It actually happens in short bursts throughout. Short but very energetic bursts that happen to push Brad Pitt and the other cast members to the limit when it comes to what they can show off for an R-rated film. There's tons of bloody violence, there's tons of creative kills, there's tons of one-liners, and heck, Brian Tyree Henry happens to reference Thomas the Tank Engine in almost every single scene that he's in. So it's surprising that they managed to get that much mileage out of it, especially since he considers bad guys diesels. So if you've ever seen Thomas and the Magic Railroad, you might actually get a kick out of those references. But one thing that I really liked about this film as well is the ending climax. Not only does that have the longest stretch of action in the film, but it happens to tie up everything in a, you know, every loose end pretty well, and it happens to give every character a fate that seems befitting for them. Now, it is true that the, that the pacing can sometimes be a little wonky due to its out-of-order nature, and there are some jokes that just do not land when it comes to some that feel like they aren't used all the way properly, or ones that were kind of dead on arrival. But the jokes, for the most part, are pretty funny, and the action often hits just as hard as the director's previous films. And yet, just instead of Charlie's Theron being tossed around like a rag doll, it's Brad Pitt who has to go through a practical rogues gallery of assassins that feel like they could be right out of Santa Destroy, if you've ever played No More Heroes. So yeah, I really liked this one. Probably one of my favorite action films this year. Not perfect, but definitely extremely entertaining. That's why I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. See you next time.